Hi, and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel, we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. I have a variety of services that I offer to assist in your awakening journey, and you can find those listed in the description box below. Today, we're going to be doing the daily reading for Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. And today's a day that's ruled by the third eye and guided by abundance. And the galactic signature of today is the blue galactic storm energy. And the blue storm energy, we are in the blue lunar storm year. And there is a video on that galactic year. If you look in the portals and gateways playlist, you can find that if you haven't seen that video. It's a really big, powerful energy that we're in right now. And so now we have the blue galactic storm day. So this, this energy is going to be amplified even more by the fact that we are in the blue lunar storm year. So this blue storm tribe is all about catalyzing self-generation and energy. So it's about really knowing and owning the way that we W-I-E-L-D our energy, right? How do we C-O-M-M-A-N-D our energy? That we know the power of our words, of our thoughts, of our actions, of our energy and our focused intent, and we utilize that. We are the active catalysts for change in our own lives, right? We really take ownership of that. We learn how to be the still point in the eye of the storm. That's what this blue lunar storm energy is all about. I want to read you a quote from the bottom. It says, Blue storm, ambassador of self-generation, inspires us to activate our inner resources that we may call upon our inner source to generate the transformation we seek to catalyze. As awakened thunder beings, we have unlimited capacity to be of influence, be it through our vigor, charisma, or stillness. Blue Storm declares, circulate energy. Usher in renewal and reconfiguration. Thunderous outbreaks can be positively purifying. Unleash intensity while remaining anchored in the center of stillness, around which dances chaos. And so a very intense energy that we are experiencing today. And with this galactic tone, which is all about harmonizing, modeling, and integrity. This is about us, I feel, really modeling our integrity today. Being that change that we want to see in the world by modeling that change through our thoughts, through our actions, through our behaviors, right? Through our words. And so really paying attention to that and doing everything with intent today. Looking at where it is that we want to shift things, where it is that we want to see H-A-N-G-E things, and really being the, the catalyzing F-O-R-C-E that brings that process about. We don't have to wait for an outer event to shape us. We can shape ourselves, right? We don't have to wait for something to be granted to us. We can go after that ourselves. We can pursue that ourselves. That's what, it's a very E-M-P-O-W-E-R-I-N-G energy that we're working with, with this blue storm energy. And so the affirmation for today is, I harmonize in order to catalyze modeling energy. I seal the matrix of self-generation with the galactic tone of integrity. I'm guided by the power of abundance, right? And we can call in that abundance today. We can be that abundance, right? That's how we utilize our energy. We utilize our energy to consciously create that which we wish to experience, including all forms of abundance. And with this harmonizing tone, it's also about how can we work with others? How can we bring others together into this, into our creation? How can we we uh, affect the C-H-A-N-G-E that we want to see? How can we be that catalytic force with that uh, while working in harmony and flow with other beings, with other awakened thunder beings, right? And so the astrology for today is equally intense. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot going on today. And so we're going to get into this a little bit. We have the moon in the sign of Cancer. And the moon is going to be moving later this evening into the sign of Leo. But for the majority of the daytime today, the moon is going to be in Cancer. And so... <coughs> This this was yesterday and the day before as well that the moon was in Cancer. It's a very feeling energy. It's a very intuitive energy. It's a very nurturing energy. And we have we have a just a, a lot going on here. So the moon is uh, trining Venus today, which is a very positive aspect. And remember, Venus is conjunct the sun right now, very conjunct the sun. And they will be conjunct or within a few degrees of each other for quite a while. So we've been talking about this energy. Go back through some of the, pa the daily readings from the past few days if you want to hear more about that energy. But now we also have the sun and Venus moving into conjunction with Chiron. And they're gonna they're five degrees away right now, so they will be getting closer. Uh, right now, we're not feeling this as, but we're beginning to feel... 
the stirrings of that energy. So this is a deep healing that we're going to be experiencing around our sense of self, around our identity, right? And how it is that we bring that identity out into the world. How it is that we shine that, right, with the sun? How do we show that? And so it's no, I was thinking about this, uh, this morning as I was looking over the astrology and I realized no wonder the peacock card has been coming out so much, right? Because that's all about showcasing who we are, right? And so stepping into our authenticity, being proud of who we are. And so it's that kind of energy. Where are we able to do that? When we have Chiron coming into conjunction, this is all in the sign of Aries, remember. We're also looking at a lot of the themes that were going on. And I want to look at the degree that Chiron is at. Yeah, Chiron's at eight degrees of Aries, you guys, okay? So when we had the Mars conjunct Chiron energy last year, and we had all of this powerful, the Mars retrograde in Aries, all of this energy going on, that was at the same degree. That was around eight, nine degrees of Aries. So this energy, this makes this very powerful when we have these planets coming into conjunction, when we have the sun and Venus moving into conjunction with Chiron at this same degree. This is like a check-in point. This is like, what have we learned in terms of our E-M-P-O-W-E-R-M-E-N-T? right? How do we implement that? Who are we? How has our sense of self grown? And how are we able to show that in the world? How are we able to go after what it is that we desire to actualize our dreams and desires? And where are we still holding ourselves back? What wounds are still wanting to be healed around this? And this energy is really emphasized. And remember, we're building into that energy that we just talked about. So that's going to be throughout the week we're feeling that. And it's going to, I'm not sure the exact day that they're going to be um, lined up exactly with Chiron at that eight degree point. It, it's later in the week sometime is what I'm assuming. Uh, and we'll, we'll continue to talk about that. But today, helping this energy along, we also have a T-square between moon Air, the moon, Eris, and Pluto. And so this is really powerful energy. And the moon will be in Cancer. And then, um, yeah, as it moves on into Leo, the T-square will be a little bit less intense. So we're really experiencing it in the sign of cancer, all right? So this is our emotionality. This is our nurturing nature. And then we have we have our our more masculine nature it represented really interestingly by Eris and Aries, but it's like our this is our empowered feminine energy as well, right? But Aries is is I feel Aries as a lot of a masculine energy, right? And Cancer as a lot of a feminine energy. But yeah, it's, and Pluto is the planet that represents P-O-W-E-R, right? And so a lot of that, a lot of we may be experiencing uh, P-O-W-E-R plays today, sort of uh, S-T-R-U-G-G-L-E-S, where, where that's concerned. Uh, this may, especially with cancer energy, right, be witnessed in the home. It may be witnessed also in any of our relationships, in any circumstances today. It's going to be, we're really being shown. And with this moon in cancer, it's the emotionality of that too. Where are we emotionally, T-R-I-G-G-E-R-E-D, by, by these displays of P-O-W-E-R? How can we find our own individual P-O-W-E-R and stand strong in that? Remember this blue storm energy. How can we be that still point within the chaos, right? How can we observe that chaos, especially when it's coming up as wounds, right? How can we observe that instead of reacting to it and really understand what's under there? And with the, another T-square we have going on today, or a T, yeah, another T-square between Mars, Mercury, and the South Node, we're really seeing this in terms of our mental processes as well, right? Remember, the South Node is the past. It's, it's old energies. And so when we're looking at this in terms of Mars squaring Mercury, Mercury squaring the South Node, and the South Node opposing Mars, right? This is an, another aspect of our E-M-P-O-W-E-R-M-E-N-T, but it's, it's also working with our, with our mental processes, right? So what are those old mental blocks that come up that block our ability to express ourselves dynamically in the world, right? What is coming up? There's a lot where this is just, this is really being revealed, right? We started this process last year for through the second half of 2020. And with, this is a refinement of that process because we are all being called to step into our P-O-W-E-R. And so we're going to keep being C-H-L-A-L-L-E-N-G-E-D until we learn the lessons, until we are able to fully embody our essence and fully actualize that, right? Because that's what we're all being called to do. So we have plenty of po our, um, potential 
to learn about that. We still have the bisextile going on between Mars, Chiron, and Saturn that we talked about, which is also about teaching us how to implement those lessons. What have we learned? What wounds have we healed around that? How are we now able to step into our lives more confidently? So I hope that all made sense. That's a lot of energies that we got swirling around today. And so just really uh, remembering and understanding that we have ownership over our own energy, right? Just really knowing that, standing firm in that, knowing that when we are truly healed, nothing that and that happens on the outside, nothing that anybody else does can shake us. And so if we are feeling, if we are feeling T-R-I-G-G-E-R-E-D today, we want to look at where that's coming from because we really want to be able to heal that. We want, right, it is ideal to be in a place where other people's energies do not affect us because there's nothing, there's no buttons for them to press anymore, right? We've healed all of that. And so every time when this energy starts getting intense, just remind yourself, this is an opportunity for me to heal more deeply, right? When anybody else's actions, thoughts, or words can heavily influence us, that gives them P-O-W-E-R over us. So take that P-O-W-E-R back. All right. Okay. Clear. We're going to use the Thoth Tarot today. Let's get some guidance for today. Interesting. So we have the Seven of Pentacles, which in this deck is, um, in this deck is called Failure. And then we have the Five of Pentacles, Worry. And we have the two of pentacles, change. So a lot of pentacle energy coming out here. So this is a lot of real world stuff that people are dealing with today. A lot of uh, things in the manifest reality, things in the 3D realm, if you will. Uh, there's a lot of shifts and changes going on, I think, and that's causing a lot of stress. <clears throat> a lot of stress, a lot of worry. I feel like, I feel like there are some people who are resisting change because they're afraid, right? Like, am I ready for this? Can I handle this? What's going to happen as a result of this? And some of these changes, I'm getting the impression that it's like they can't really be helped, right? There's nothing that can be done to stop them. And so all of this excessive worry, it's like that fear of failure. That's what it is, that fear of failure. Some people um, who are kind of being FORC... F-O-R-C-E-D into change and really resisting it and having a lot of a lot of um, emotions come up around that because you're not sure if you can handle it. You don't understand what's going on. And then other people who may be dragging your feet a little bit because you know that something wants to shift and change, but you're not quite sure. You're afraid it's that it's you're afraid that you're not good enough. You're afraid that you're not going to be able to do it, that you're not ready, right? But change is coming. It's like I'm, I'm hearing like that Fuji song, right? Ready or not, here I come. Then we have the Aeon, which I believe is judgment with interference, the Eight of Swords, and the Princess of Swords. Yeah. And so it's this is our mental functions are what is interfering with our clarity right now getting really caught up in the mind, right? And when we do have this aspect going on with Mercury, with Mercury and Mars, right? And there's probably, uh, let me take a look for, let me take a look for us here. See what else is going on with Mercury. Let's see, where's Mercury? Yeah, Mercury squaring the nodes, squaring Mars. Uh, sextile and Uranus though, right? So that Uranus is the planet of change, right? And so, yeah, there may be some, some, uh, some unexpected shifts and changes going on, especially uh, in our mental space. And there may be realizations coming through for people today about things that need to change. And it automatically triggers that, uh, that worry and that stress response. Like, am I good enough? Do I have what it takes? Uh, what, what am I going to do? What are the variables here? How can I control them, right? And we really can't, right? Which is the irony. What we can control, as we see with this blue galactic storm energy, is our own energy. <coughs> And our own intent and what it is that we're putting out there. Uh, but this is very much that energy, right? This is that fear of, this is that empowerment energy that we're working on, that confidence energy. So this is those blocks coming up, right? And so, yeah, our it's our obsession. It's like being too caught up in the mind energy right now. That is really, uh, it's blocking people from, from, from being able to, it's like, I feel people being almost like feeling like they're paralyzed. 
and their ability to make a decision just because it's your it's that process of and remember this is what mercury and pisces is all about is utilizing that intuition utilizing that higher mind uh so we're being called to step out of the lower mind into the higher mind right now because the lower mind is just taking us in circles it's just taking us in loops and then we have the Ace of Cups coming out with the Queen of Swords. And so this is emotional fulfillment, right? This is happiness. This is joy. This is bliss. But this comes from the mastery of the mind, right? The Queen of Swords. She is very decisive. She is. Notice how she's just like kicking back on this cloud here. She's just kicking back titties out right now. <laughs> Uh, she's got her sword draped here, but she's not looking to, like a lot of times the Queen of Swords looks um, ferocious, right? Like she's she's ready to use that sword. Uh, this Queen of Swords, she's like, she could if she wants, but she's not feeling overly, um, she's not feeling overly uh, T-H-R-E-A-T-E-N-E-D right now. She's just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I got this sword. Yeah, I know if I need to use it, I'll use it. Yeah, you don't really want to test me on that. But I'm not really worried. Like, I'm I'm not, she's not in this state right here. Right? And so she is, she has a calm mental space. She is met very mentally agile. She's very intelligent. She's very, she's very decisive. Right? But she doesn't, uh, she's not um, overly vigilant either. She knows the exact right amount of vigil vigilance. And so this is sort of the energy that we're looking to embody, right? She is not, she is not a V-I-C-T-I-M of her mind. She is, she is the master of her mind. And then we have the eight of cups, right? Is that what this is? Three, four, five. Six. Yep. The eight of cups with the hanged man. Let's get a couple more cards here. What are you, what are you needing to, what are you, what are you feeling uh, called to, to walk away from right now that you're not, right? That's this change energy. What is, what are you, what, where's the pause, right? Where you are debating this change, but not taking action on it. And maybe that, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe uh, you haven't figured out quite how, you know, something's about to change and it is bringing up these feelings, right? These worries, uh, but at the same time, like, you're not sure exactly how it's like, I feel for some people too, it's almost like you're sensing a change, but it's not quite here yet. And you're knowing that you're going to have to make a change. You're just not, you're just not sure, um, exactly what it's going to be. So that's an energy that I'm picking up. And it's also that energy of like, um, unexpected, unexpected changes, unexpected, uh, unexpected losses un just things that are changing things that are uh, that are um that are leaving your reality that are really uh shifting your perspective with that hanged man let's see we have gain nine of pentacles we have the fool we have the four of swords truce and then we have oppression and fortune all right so this is a very interesting energy that we have out here and so this is absolutely a new beginning, right? And this is like when I see this truce, this four of swords, right? This is healing. This is this is resting, rejuvenation. And so there's definitely uh I feel like there's going to be a need to sort of step back to release we're we're being asked to release ourselves or we're being released from things um almost against our will maybe in some situations here and there's a change of perspective that needs to happen and so we may need we may need to take a little time for healing we may need to take a little time um just to center into this to this new beginning here um like we may yeah it, we may not be thrown headfirst into the new beginning. There may be a little bit of time to kind of get our bearings, which would be nice, right? <laughs> um, tell me more about this Ten of Wands here. Well, the Ten of Wands is putting the burdens down, right? And then we got the Ace of Wands. Yeah. So this is the end of this oppressive cycle. This new cycle, this next turn of the wheel, right? This new cycle with the Ace of Wands. Old cycle, Ten of Wands new cycle ace of wands right 
which is a very fortunate cycle, but it's all about, I feel like, all right, what's going on here is we're being asked to change our perspective around the things that we've lost, the things that we're needing to leave behind, the things that are leaving us behind, right? How can we shift our perspective of that? How can we see the gift in that, right? Uh, for some people may be called to sacrifice something. There may be something that you have to sacrifice in order to have what you want, whether that's peace of mind, whether that's uh, something that you're trying to manifest or create. Uh, there may be sacrifices that have to be made. And so some people may be uh, feeling at odds about that. But it's a, the putting the burdens down, right? Putting down the things that are weighing on us that we're carrying, that you can only carry so much, right? If you have a backpack, once that backpack is full, you can't fit anything else in that bag without it exploding everywhere. And if you try, the seams are going to burst and then you're going to have nothing. You won't be able to carry anything anymore, right? And so, like, we really have to be wise about what we're putting in our bag. What is it that we are carrying? We can only carry so many things. And so it's like really understanding and prioritizing, I feel, for people too. Yeah. And then there is, there's just, there's this period of healing, there's this period, I feel like uh, this whole process in and of itself is going to be healing. But there may be a little pause here. There may be a pause uh, as we get our bearings. But I honestly feel like... I honestly... Eh, I don't know. That energy is only going to be for some people. For a lot of us, it's like change is happening and it's happening fast. And so it's just about, that's what it is. Okay, that's what it is is finding that way, even if things are unfolding rapidly, how can we find our center? How can we go into that calm and still place when we need to, even if it's only for a few moments a day, right? How can we make sure that regardless of what's happening in our external reality, we find a way, that's the prioritizing again, we find a way to make sure that we have time for the things that matter, for our own healing, for that recentering, recalibrating, right? to really allow those insights to come in, to quiet that monkey mind. We have to be responsible for finding this time for our healing in the midst of everything that's going on. That is, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm feeling the most strongly. And then we have the Empress on the bottom of the deck here, right? This is fertility. This is abundance. This is uh, just plentitude, right? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, and then we have temperance. And the death card. All right. With the ten, what is this? The ten of cups. Come on. All right. These are three major arcana here. This is a whole lot of healing. This is a whole lot of transformation, right? In this new cycle. Right? Because that's what we always love to hear. We've healed, we've transformed, and now we, we get a whole new cycle with more healing and more transformation, right? But it's beautiful. That's what we came here to do. And so uh, if that's what you're going through right now, congratulations. We are all exactly where we're supposed to be. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. I hope that you enjoyed this reading. If you like this video, like this video. Uh, it always helps. Drop a comment down below. Let me know how this resonated for you. Let me know how your day is going. There are links down below to donate if you feel so moved to do so. And my email is also down below with a list of the different services that I offer. Please reach out to me if you want any assistance navigating these energies. I am so happy and so honored to be able to help. I love you guys. Have an amazing Tuesday.